In this sequence, I'll show you how you can open an assignment in in copy, check out content from the server, make edits and amends, and then check the content back into the server. Then I'll also show you how the edits made in in copy are used to update the original InDesign document. Let's get started. I've already launched in copy, but the very first thing I'm going to do before I even think about opening the assignment I want to work on is to go to the workspace pop-up in the top right corner of the in copy window and choose advanced because that gives me a very useful panel dock running down the right hand side. And key for this tutorial, it displays the assignments panel at the top of the dock. If I click on the assignments panel to show it, you'll see there's nothing in it. And that's because we haven't opened an assignment yet. Let's do that now. I've been to the editorial workflow meetings. I know that I need to open an assignment and I know where on the shared server the project and assignment files are located. So I go to file open and I'll navigate to the project folder on the shared network server. In my example, I'll go to the desktop. The title of this project is Flybook CC 2018, and here it is. I'll double click on the folder icon and you can see the contents of the folder. At the start of this process, understanding the folder structure and file naming conventions for an in-copy InDesign workflow is absolutely essential if you're going to get the best out of the integration of InCopy and InDesign. You need to be confident and in control of the workflow and you need to understand what you're doing and why you are doing it if you want to work efficiently and productively. Every publishing workflow is different, even within the same publishing house and for similar projects. What you're about to see is an example of one way of working in a book publishing workflow. In this example, the project folder contains three InDesign files, the chapters of a book, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and a links folder for the images, but that typically doesn't concern me as an editor. What I really need to focus on are the assignment folders, one for each chapter of the book. If there were 33 chapters in the book, I'd be expecting to see 33 matching assignments folders. I'm going to go into the Fly Chapter 1 Assignments folder because what I need to open up in this workflow is an assignment file with the ICMA file extension. This is an umbrella file that will allow me to access all the in-copy content files that make up the content of the chapters. Again, there's a contents folder within the assignments folder but that doesn't directly concern me at this moment. I'll either click on the assignment file to select it, then click open, or I can double click on the file name. The assignment opens in story view by default. What you see here is all the individual text stories that were exported from the InDesign document. Each story or component is separated by these gray component bars. But what I want to do in this example is to move to layout view straight away. This is where as an editor, you can see and work in the exact layout geometry of the original InDesign layout. Here's the opening spread for the chapter and I'll just scroll down to the next spread. What you should also be able to identify just by looking at the spread is that in this in-copy workflow, I don't have access to the images, although it is possible to set a workflow where editors do have access to images. Also, I can't change the size or position of the text frames, although I can edit the content as you'll see next. The other important bit of interface detail you need to be aware of is the icon that appears in the top left corner of any text frame that is part of an assignment. It's the small circular icon with a down arrow. If you rest your cursor on one of them, 
don't move your cursor for a second, you should see a tooltip indicating that the in-copy content is available for anyone in the workgroup to check out from the server and make edits and amends. I'll do exactly that shortly, but before I do that, let's take a look at the assignments panel. I'll click on the panel to show it, and I'll make the panel deeper so that you can see all the in-copy content files that are part of this assignment. What you see in this example are all the text frames that have been exported from the InDesign document. For example, on the spread, if I click into this introductory paragraph, you'll see the corresponding entry, the InCopy content file highlight in the assignments panel. If I click into the main body copy on the same page, you'll see a different InCopy content entry highlight. This content file runs through the main text area of the entire chapter. It's not limited to this page, but runs page after page after page. Notice also, for example, if I double click on this in copy entry, in copy moves me to the page where the entry is located and places the text insertion point at the beginning of the text. I'll just zoom back out. I'll just click into the main body text again. Notice the highlight in the assignment panel moves to the entry I had highlighted previously. I'll double click the entry for the introductory paragraph to move to the spread. And let's zoom in a little bit and focus on these paragraphs. Next, what I want to do is to check out the in-copy content from the shared server so that it becomes live on page so that I can make changes to it. There are a number of ways of doing this. Here's one. In the assignments panel, with the in-copy content entry selected, I'm going to go to the bottom of the assignments panel and click the checkout selection button. Now look carefully at the interface detail. A pencil icon appears in the assignments panel and the tooltip indicates that I've got the content checked out from the server. Anyone else in the workgroup who had the assignments panel open, for example, a designer working in InDesign, would see that the content was checked out by Brian Brain, because that's my username for InCopy on this PC. Also notice the same pencil icon in the top left hand corner of the actual text frame. So what is essential here is that I've got the content checked out, and that means that no one else can check this out and make changes whilst it is locked out to me. So I'll go ahead and make a change. Something pretty obvious that will show up clearly when I round trip this content back into InDesign. Something I've just got on the clipboard. That's it for this bit of InCopy content. I don't want to make any further changes to this paragraph. It's not essential that I check this back into the server right now, but it can be a good habit to get into early on. I could, for example, do a file save content, but you'll see that the in copy content still remains checked out to me. What I'll do in this instance is in the assignments panel with the in copy content entry highlighted, I'll go to the same button I used to check out the content. Notice that it's now become the check in button. I'll click the check in button. You'll get a warning that you won't be able to use Edit Undo to change this, but that's fine. I'll click OK. The content is now checked back into the server. Anyone else in the workgroup can now check it out and make changes to it. My icons have reverted to the available to edit icons. Let's do it one more time. I'll click into the main body copy in the assignments panel the corresponding in copy content entry highlights. I'll click the checkout selection button. This content is now live checked out to me. I'll make an obvious change. Then I'll click the check in button. Okay, the dialog box. 
that edit is now saved back to the server and I'm done. I can simply close down the chapter one all stories assignment, the ICMA file by clicking on the cross. In the next tutorial sequence, I'll show you how the changes made in InCopy are updated in the original InDesign file. Please remember to like the like if you like to like, and better still, subscribe to my channel. There's a link to the next tutorial in the extended description. Click the show more button below this movie. And thanks for watching.